You have an Amiga 500 that needs a power port on the floppy controller and some resistors replaced? I'll be right there. Dr. Chris House calls. Let's do this. So, it's Saturday. It is 10.42 in the morning. As you can tell from my uh, messy house here in the fisheye lens of my kitchen and dining room, I am going on a house call. Yeah, that intro, while not my best, was kind of funny. I had to prop myself up on the couch to make my super fatness be fat. So, it's red and dark in here. There we go. But we're going to be heading north to Harrisburg, Pennsylvania to do a quick fix on a Amiga. So, I hope you enjoy. Stay tuned for the ride. Brief little montage of the drive with the GoPro here. And I do have my entire bag there on that table with the dog treats. Full of pretty much everything that I need for this repair. So... Enjoy. It's freaking hot. It's July when I'm filming this. In the summertime, we are in my car. Got the aircon AC, as we call it here in America. And uh, we're headed to Harrisburg. For those of you who don't know, I too live in Pennsylvania, United States of America. You're coming with me. I'm the Terminator. Let's drive. Turn right. <laughs> All right. In half a mile. Turn left. So, for those of you who don't know, this is where I live. Yay. Very populous. Majority of farmland. Slightly rural area of southern central. South central. Pennsylvania and I'm on my journey to the highway this is how I have to get to the highway and there's another uh, cemetery graveyard really big one on the right hand side here you might be able to see some they have no headstones they're all flat in the ground with a couple mausoleums anyway I fly my drone there you've probably seen some old drone footage of the couple times I actually posted a video on YouTube about it so, yeah, this Dr. Chris house call thing is new. I uh, am only doing this because, number one, I don't like people just showing up at my house, you know. And number two, uh, the owner of this is really close, and I was asked to, if I could do this from another repair person, and I figured I would help them out because that's what I do. Hopefully I have enough fuel. Probably not. My ETA is one hour, seven minutes. I have, well, it's not that far actually, but the slow back roads and their slow speed limits. So here we are, we are on 83. Interstate 83 northbound out of southern, now mid, York County, Pennsylvania, headed towards Dolphin. Not Dolphin like the fish mammal. D A U P H I N. So we spell things weird. And I got uh, about a half hour left or so. It's just another highway boring drive, so I'll just time lapse some stuff for you. city of Pennsylvania. We have to cross the Susquehanna River here. I don't know how much you can see. It's a big bridge over the river. 
All right, so here we are. We're at Mr. John's house in his basement. Excuse the noise, he has a massive server rack in the back. And just like that, here he is. Hi, everybody. What's up, everybody? Um, what we're going to do today, we have a Revision 5 Amiga 500 that has some issues, and we have some bits to look at. So, John, why don't you tell us how you got to the Amiga? So, <clears throat> my dad was a uh, my dad was a Commodore fan back in the days. Um, he started. He did IT before it was IT. So, you know, he was uh, he was a big IBM uh, PC support guy. He was doing Commodore support. He was doing and anything you could think of, really, back in those days, Novell especially. But he, uh, but yeah, he uh, he started out with the VIC-20, I believe it was, and uh, then he moved on to the Commodore 64, which he absolutely loved, and then moved on to the moved on to the Amiga. So he bought this, he bought this Amiga 500. I believe it was the year I was born. So this machine is actually. Uh, as old as I am, and uh, it still works, but uh, needs needs a little bit of TLC, and I'm um, hoping Dr. Chris can uh, give us a hand here. It was made when he was born. That makes me feel really young. <laughs> Are you 40 yet? I just turned 35. Oh there my go. God! <laughs> well, happy birthday. Well, thank you. Thank All right, you. we're gonna get set up, and we're gonna get started. So here's our victim. We have a Rev 5 Amiga 500 that supposedly works. We have two blown out EMI filter caps in the back. And there's a busted trace on the external floppy port, 23 I believe, for the 12 volt. And we're going to take a peek at that right now. And then we're going to get into it, whip out Lorena, and cut those resistors off. I had, well, I had, there we go. I got some brand new ones I got off the jungle store. And we're going to put them on and see. Make them right here. You can see 23rd zaps around. There's our break. What we're going to do is we're just going to wire this together with some like 18 gauge and get this trace restored. On pin 23, it is a simple wire mod to uh, mimic the original circuit. I also removed the copper underneath that burnt out, just in case. I could have bonded it together, but it would be exposed. And I don't trust the metal after it got super zapped with electricity. So we got brand new solid core fixing that trace, and we're going to now repair the resistors. So this is a 47 ohm resistor, and we're going to replace that one. And there's another one over there. That's EMI 401. That's burnt slap up too. I'm sorry I'm not recording more, but I'm handheld. And uh, let me Lorena this out and Lorena that out, and then we'll get them replaced. All right, there is our new 47 and EMI 401. That'll bring the joystick port back to life. Now we're gonna go in Lorena this one out, and I'll zap into when it's completed. One second. Okay, so we're getting set back up here. My GoTech is plugged in, well, not turned on yet. The USB to DB9, the USB mouse is hooked up, the original floppy drive. Remember, she's 1.3, so I won't be able to boot off that. There's a workbench disc in here. So we're gonna plug in the original 512K slow expansion ever so carefully. Plug in the power. Now, just so you know, this is a Dell monitor that's not a U2410F, so it kind of displays a greenish tint. Here we go. Powering on. Do we get external GoTech light? We shit. We do. So it's booting workbench 1.3. We're bluish there, but you might see a little bit of greenish tint. If this works, we'll have two icons on the desk. Extras 1.3, so our floppy disk is functional. Now what we're gonna do, loads up nice and quick, is turn this off, unplug the GoTech, get the GoTech out of the way, and we're gonna test out this secondary floppy. This thing is a god almighty, I don't know. A custom wired up, I don't know what disc, with no name, a Citizen. This is definitely a PC drive. If this doesn't work, we're going to be doing that repair all over again. Are you ready? Here we go. Please don't blow up. Please don't blow up. I'm going to keep an eye on this light and it is not booting because it's thinking 
it's probably modded so this is DF0. Let's see. Workbench in this drive. No light. Let's turn it off. It's booting. Right. No shit. Let's see. What did you do? Unplugged it and plugged it back in. Dude, do you know how many times I did that? Well, actually, it still wouldn't have worked anyways because that trace was trace broke. Yeah. And we were recording that. I unplugged the cable and plugged it back in. Let's see if this works. We don't know. Let's put this in. It's spinning and making a noise, and there you go. One DF1 external drive. You got the rest of the housing? Yeah. Top? Oh, no, that's it. No, that's... Uh, this is loud. That's that right there next to it. There's DF1 accessing. There should be 321 libraries. That has a spinny motor, and yeah, DF1 is DF1 bad, bad, so... That has, like, a spin-up motor motor. That's crazy. Let's do this one. It's like brrr, like a hard drive. Yeah. Like a roar, and it, act, you can feel the it's access. It's yeah. Yeah, but it's, it's like something in here. Like a real spin spin. Right. And then it See, spins that down. DF, that DF1 bad, though, is what I was originally getting on that other, with that other external drive, no matter what. Right. So. Well, it'll have no power. Right. Okay. Like 1990 or some shit. So this, phew. All right, drive number two, three. Power. Is it bad? If, assuming that the drive is working properly. That and the go check work. Well, let's, okay, we're going to test that theory. I brought my actual floppy disk, like my oh, right. floppy I was gonna say drive. drive too. We're going to yeah. test the real drive, but the go tech is a real drive. You can put these in them. I mean, if yeah, you get a GoTech, you can put this in there, and then you're good. Right. Yep. Yeah. Libraries. So there you go. We have so two I, bad yeah. drives from yesteryear. Here's the libraries for three, whatever, whatever. You can see the light blinking. The old Workbench 1.3 fuel gauge. You can't see the hidden files because it's Workbench 1.3, and 1.3 sucks. This is State of the Art by Spaceballs in PAL on NTSC Amiga. And as you can see, it puts the floppy drive through the test and we will run this whole demo in a slightly tinged shade because of this monitor. You can see a green little bit of tint up here. Could be some OSD stuff we could do to flake it out, but remember NTSC doesn't run this correctly. So you'll see a little bit of pull up, a little bit of stuff at the top. So there's your NTSC weirdness. Nothing with the Amiga, it's just NTSC. If this wasn't PAL, it would look normal. So as you can see me in the darkness, we have another Amiga that's saved. Run space balls, we got the resistors fixed, and we got a floppy disk tested, the GoTech tested. Unfortunately, the original Citizen drive took a dump, as did the other one. I don't know if they're converted PC floppy drives, and it just doesn't like 1.3. We have a path for an upgrade for an Agnes, and then you can buy Stormint or do the one meg chip mod based on my video I did in the past. So that's it. We're going to test this after it's all back together with the keyboard and all the stuff and here's some audio. So I broke a piece of plastic. Way to go, Chris. Sorry. <laughs> But I'm not the first one because here's another piece of broken plastic that I did not do. There it is. That was my fault. <laughs> <laughs> I broke the floppy button on this thing when okay. I was a kid. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so it's a big, big pinky finger. It'll start in a second. There it is. It's going to be fast because it's in NTSC, but yeah. See, you can see the monitor still working, but you see the, uh, see the horizontal lines are starting to... Boom. Boom. <laughs> Complete. <laughs> incredible. Absolutely incredible. Happy? Happy, like, <laughs> what, what's higher than happy? I don't know. Like ecstatic? <laughs> I guess. Ecstatic. Plus that's you know, your dad's original computer, which is the cool part. It you know? is. It's really grateful also, really. <laughs> like, you know, it's cool because, like, this was, like, this was the machine, you know, like, this was my dad's machine, but 
you know, nowadays he, he, he refers to it as our machine, you know. So that's really cool and, and uh, you know, it's awesome to it's awesome to get this thing like, you know, working as well as it can at this point and it's you know, and it's it's featured on a super cool YouTube channel and it's it's out there, man, you know. But yeah, I'm eternally grateful for your work. I don't normally do this, but since I broke your plastic, you can have Oh, oh, man, it's like, external floppy. So you sure you, yeah, man. You don't have to do what that. I do. That's oh. kind of what I do. If you guys know me on my YouTube channel, there you go. It's ain't bullshit. Yeah. He gets my floppy drive. Right. So. <laughs> I broke his floppy plastic, so there you go. That'll cover it. <laughs> well, that's cool. Well, then you don't need to give me the, the bottom bezel piece then. Okay. The <laughs> so there you go. So oh, just remember, man. plug that in when it's off. So as you can see, I'm on my way home. I'm sorry I didn't film any closing, closing footage. But another Amiga was saved. Mr. John has his original Amiga 500 that his father taught him the computer on when he was a young man himself. So another one's been saved, everybody. Thanks for coming along on the ride. We're gonna get back home, get all this stuff unpacked, and get on to the next one. As always, thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something. Funny, you bastard.